Hey folks, I'm Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy and the host of Animal Planet's My Cat From Hell. And I'm here to introduce you to a really exciting program called Food for Thought, brought to you by The Animal Place, one of the country's leading farmed animal sanctuaries with two shelters in Northern California. Like most of the organizations that I work with, from time to time, you're gonna come into contact with a farmed animal rescue. Now that could be a bunny that is surrendered right after Easter, or it could be a flock of chickens that are confiscated from a hoarding case or a cruelty case. It could be a horse that's surrendered because of financial constraints, whatever it is. If you have the resources and the space wouldn't you give that animal the same loving care and attention and commitment to a forever home as you would a dog or a cat? Well, of course you would. Now, here's the challenge. What's the difference between that farmed animal and the one that you serve as food at organizational functions? For those of us who work in animal rescue, sheltering, and protection, it's our job to help animals whenever and however we can, and that should extend to our policies concerning food at our events. An animal-friendly menu policy, I think, is an extension of all of our missions, including mine as a TV personality. We get to show folks at every turn what it's like to love all animals and to widen that circle of compassion. And this can easily be done by serving an animal-friendly menu at your functions. An animal-friendly menu policy, it's a simple statement adopted by your board of directors that outlines your position on serving plant-based, ideally vegan food at your events. Adopting the policy, it's easy and it's mission-driven, as our peers at some of the most respected shelters in the country will tell you. It's extremely important for animal shelters to adopt a vegetarian friendly policy um, because we're the ones on the front lines rescuing the animals in our communities. And it just doesn't make sense to rescue a dog or a cat or even a pig or some other farmed animal and then turn around and serve meat at a community-based function. Why would we go out there and rescue these animals when we're serving other ones for people to eat? It's important for animal welfare groups to take into consideration animal welfare when they're choosing what foods they want to serve at their functions. The fact of the matter is, is that the chickens, the pigs, the turkeys, the cattle, these farm animals in our country aren't that different from the dogs and cats who we welcome into our homes and into our families. These are individuals. They have likes. They have dislikes. And most importantly, they want to avoid suffering. I think it's important to have a policy because it really is a statement of what that organization is about. It sets the tone, it sets the parameters, and it gives staff and volunteers that uh, revitalized mission that they're here to protect animals, so much so that a policy is in place to ensure that it takes place. There are numerous benefits to serving plant-based foods at our functions. Not only do they help people eat with a nice, clean conscience, but also many of these foods that we're serving help improve people's health. So where it's a real win-win for both the guests at our functions and, of course, for animals as well. The benefits of an animal-friendly menu policy really show the community that the agency is committed to all animal welfare, not just to the animal welfare of domesticated animals, but to the welfare of all the animals in our community. We're showing them that we're taking the stance by not serving animals at our functions that we want to truly support all animals. Part of the mission of the Walk and Humane Society is that we advocate on behalf of animals and educate on their behalf. And so when you are serving a plant-based diet, that allows you an opportunity to educate your donors, your staff, your volunteers, and the community as to why you have that policy. It gives you an opportunity to talk about the policy, why it's in place, and why it's important as an animal welfare organization to have it. The benefits of an animal-friendly menu policy are multifold. Um, first, certainly we are consistent in our activities and in meeting our mission. Um, we get to introduce our um, supporters to a whole uh, other set of food that if they were to adopt some in their diets would reduce the demand on the overall animal agricultural system which would be wonderful not only for those animals, but also for wildlife. Um, big animal agriculture has a tremendous toll on the environment and on wildlife populations. 
If someone has concerns that there might be drawbacks to adopting a vegetarian friendly policy at their shelter, I would say to really think long and hard as to why they got into the business. Are we in this business because we want to serve flesh at our fundraisers or are we in this business because we want to rescue animals? And just because you know, you're having a vegetarian meal at the animal shelter doesn't mean those people who are criticizing it can't go home that night and eat some meat. It's just critical that the animal shelter not promote the serving of animals. Since the policy has been in place here at the Whatcom Humane Society, we have really had no drawbacks. Um, once people were educated and explained why the policy is in place, people seem to not only immediately understand why the Whatcom Humane Society had this policy, but respect it. For us here at the Marin Humane Society, we feel it's really important to emphasize this is just one meal, whether it's a Humane Society sponsored function and we're providing a, a lunch, dinner, breakfast or snack, we want to make sure we're sending the message that no animals were harmed in the serving of that product. 99% of our donors were in full support. We had a single donor who decided not to attend our black tie gala because of the policy and um, who is still a supporter of ours. And on the other end of the pendulum, we had a uh, supporter who was so ecstatic by our compassionate shift that uh, she came through with a six-figure gift to our organization to help us care for animals. Passing an animal-friendly policy at the board level, it's an easy six-step process. Add the suggested menu policy to your agenda for the next board meeting. Supply food for thought materials to your board prior to the meeting for them to review. Then facilitate an educated and a thoughtful discussion during your board meeting. Tweak the language of the policy to best suit your organization. Then bring the policy to a vote. And once the policy is in place, have your executive director work with the shelter staff, especially those in development and event planning to implement the policy. Animal Place is here to help with any questions you might have, including pointers on free product donations, recipes, and menu ideas. Numerous nonprofits working with all types of animals, companion, wildlife, and others, have already adopted an animal friendly menu policy. Join the growing trend, and as a thank you for adopting an animal friendly policy, we're here to award a $250 grant to the first 100 deserving shelters that apply. Additional details on the grant, sample policies, and additional resources, they can be viewed at our website at foodforthoughtcampaign.org. And from all of us here at Animal Place, thank you. Thank you for caring about animals in need and for considering an animal-friendly menu policy. It's time for all animal agencies to have a consistent message of compassion even down to the food we serve at our events.